All right, Chad, this is a story that I've wanted to talk about for a couple days, so I want to do it now, which is there is now evidence that the IDF directly targeted Al Jazeera journalist and American citizen Shireen Akla. They actually targeted her for assassination. This is being reported by CNN with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven journalists have put their byline on this. This is about as a firm commitment you have on a story as you possibly can. A moment of casual chatter. <laughs> then the shots start. This is the last moment we see Shireen Abu Akleh walking with colleagues, seemingly at ease. Okay, I wanted to show you Seconds this. Later, Here, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Seemingly uh, at ease. I don't want to show you her getting shot. I just want to show you this one still. You can see there's no one shooting. There's no combat happening. She's literally just standing there walking in the middle of the street with a press vest on, a helmet on. No one's carrying any weapons. No Palestinians are yelling even. No rocks are throwing. No confrontation at all. Walking with colleagues, seemingly at ease. Seconds later, she's lying motionless on the ground. I just wa watch her and there is no up and down. She, don't, she didn't breathe. And this is make me cre crazy. Why she didn't breathe? And the shooting is I still hearing. Shada Hanesha has become a key eyewitness to the May 11th shooting of Abu Akleh. She and eight others present told CNN it was the Israel Defense Forces that shot her and that they thought it was deliberate. But I think they, or, or they want to kill us. This is, this is why they shoot. I don't have another reason why they shoot. And they know, know they, we are journalists. It felt targeted. Yeah, yeah, because all the, all the, all the time when I try to, 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 to touch her body, that they sh shooting, they're shooting on me or around me. The gunfire you hear at the beginning of this clip is key. Eyewitness testimony and audio analysis show these are the shots that kill Abu Akleh. <laughs> There is a crack and then a pop. The time between these two sounds reveals how far away the gunmen are. This indicates a distance of between 177 and 197 meters, according to forensic audio analyst Rob Mayer. The tree next to where Abu Akleh was shot is also a crucial piece of evidence. This is her colleague Mujahid Asadi, another eyewitness retracing his steps days later. The bullet holes on the tree now identified with tape. Military analyst Chris Cobb-Smith told CNN that the nature of the strike marks proved this wasn't a random shot. She was targeted. He said there was no chance that random firing would result in the three or four shots hitting in such a tight group from a distance of 200 metres. Based on this analysis, we looked for potential perpetrators in the surrounding area. Less than three minutes before Abu Akleh is shot, this Israeli military truck is visible within 200 meters down the same road. The number one can be seen on the side. The truck can be seen from this angle too in these videos uploaded to Telegram, this time with armed soldiers visible. Multiple eyewitnesses said a sniper fired at them from a window in an IDF truck. The IDF's own body cam footage shared of the operation that morning shows the same military vehicles lined up on the street facing down towards Abu Akleh. CNN geolocated these videos to this location, matching the distance estimated in Mayer's audio analysis. This is also corroborated by the IDF's interim report. The IDF insists they do not deliberately target non-combatants and have said Abu Akleh could have been killed by gunfire from Palestinian militants. The Israeli government has said that there were also Palestinian gunmen in that area and that it could no. have been either. You were there. What did you see? I, I absolutely doesn't agree that there is any Palestinian guy with his gun. And as a journalist and as a human, I will not make myself in a dangerous situation. This video appears to back Hanesh's version. The nearest location where CNN has found armed people present, according to verified video evidence uploaded the morning of May 11th, is here, the other side of the IDF forces, therefore without a clear line of fire to Abu Akleh and beyond the 200-meter reach of the gunfire. In fact, the video of Abu Akleh's last moments also shows the street has no ongoing clashes or crossfire. 
It leaves the IDF vehicles as the closest and most likely source of the gunfire. And while there is yet to be an official determination on who killed Abu Akleh, these testimonies and videos are compelling evidence that the Israeli government must answer to. Katie Poglay, CNN, London. And this is the evidence. It's irrefutable. It is irrefutable that they were shooting at a, a, an American citizen, journalist, unarmed, in occupied territory where they are the, 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 have the monopoly on force. The West Bank is occupied territories. That means that the Israeli military is in control. So based on all of the analysis, the audio analysis, the forensic analysis, the video analysis, CNN has definitively said that she was targeted intentionally for kill, for death. In the moments that follow, a man in a white t-shirt makes several attempts to move her, but is forced back repeatedly by gunfire. Finally, after a few long minutes, he manages to drag her body from the street. A 51-year-old Palestinian American was killed by a bullet to the head. She had been standing with a group of journalists near the entrance of the Jenin refugee camp where they had come to cover an Israeli raid. CNN eyewitnesses said, told CNN they believe Israeli forces on the same street fired deliberately on the reporters in a targeted attack. All of the journalists were wearing protective blue vests that identified them as members of the news media. We stood in front of the Israeli military vehicles for about five to ten minutes before we made moves to ensure they saw us. And this was a habit of ours as journalists. We move as a group and we stand in front of them so they know we are journalists and then we start moving. Anesha told CNN, describing their cautious approach toward the Israeli military convoy. When Abu Akleh was shot, Hanisha said she was in shock. She couldn't understand what was happening. After she dropped on the ground, Hanisha thought she might have stumbled. But when she looked down at the reporter she had idolized since childhood, it was clear she wasn't breathing. Blood was pooling under her head. As soon as she fell, I honestly wasn't comprehending that she was shot. I was hearing the sound of bullets, but I wasn't comprehending that they were coming at us. Honestly, the whole time, I wasn't understanding. I thought they were shooting so that we stayed back. I didn't think they were trying to kill us. On the day of the shooting, Israeli military spokesperson Ran Kakav told Army Radio that Abu Akla had been filming and working for immediate outlet amidst armed our Palestinians. Lie. Outright lie. They were armed with cameras, if you'll permit me to say so. <laughs> the Israeli preliminary report said it was possible she was hit by indiscriminate Palestinian gunfire, lie, or an Israeli sniper positioned 200 meters away in an exchange of fire with the Palestinian gunman. Never happened. Neither Israel nor anyone else has provided evidence showing armed Palestinians within a clear line of fire from her. Total fucking lie. Complete and utter lie. All right, back to this. Uh, Israeli Defense Forces said on May 19th that it has not decided whether to pursue a criminal investigation into the death. It had not decided? They literally murdered a journalist, point blank! Israeli's military's top lawyer, Major General Yafat Tomer Yashamili, said in a speech, under the military's policy, a criminal investigation is not automatically launched. A person is killed in the midst of an active combat zone unless there is credible and immediate suspicion of a criminal offense. An investigation by CNN offers new evidence, including two videos of the scene of the shooting, that there was no active combat nor any Palestinian militants in the moments leading up to her death. Videos obtained by CNN corroborated by testimony from eight eyewitnesses and audio forensic analysis and explosive weapons expert suggest Abu Akla was shot dead in a targeted attack by Israeli forces. Holy fucking hell. That's the Orlando tweet. In a 16-minute cell phone video shared with CNN, a man filming walks through the spot where the journalists had gathered, zooming in on the Israeli armored vehicles parked in the distance and says, look at the snipers. Then when a teenager peers tentatively up the street, he shouts, don't kid around. You think it's a joke? You don't want to die. You, we want to live. Israeli raids on the Janine refugee camp have become a regular occurrence since early April, in which in the wake of several attacks by Palestinians that left Israelis and foreigners dead. Some of the suspected assailants of those attacks were from Janine, according to the Israeli military. Residents say the raids often lead to injuries and deaths. On Saturday, a 17-year-old Palestinian was killed and an 18-year-old was critically injured by Israeli fire during a raid. Salum Awad, the 27-year-old Janine Camp resident who filled the 16-minute video, told CNN that there were no armed Palestinians or any clashes in the area. He hadn't expected there to be gunfire, given the presence of journalists nearby. There was no conflict or confrontations at all. We were just about 10 guys, give or take, walking around laughing and joking with the journalists. We were not afraid of anything. We didn't expect anything would happen because when we saw journalists around, we thought it would be a safe area. We saw around four or five military vehicles on the street with rifles sticking out, and one of them shot Shireen. We were standing right there. We saw it. When we tried to approach her, they shot at us. I tried to cross the street to help, but I couldn't. 
16 year old who was among the group of men and boys in the street told CNN there were no shots fired, no stone throwing, nothing before Abu Akhla was shot. He said that journalists had told them not to follow as they walked toward Israeli forces, so he stayed back. CNN reviewed a total of 11 videos showing the scene in the Israeli military convoy from different angles before, during, and after Abu Akhla was killed. Eyewitnesses who were filming when the journalist was shot were also in the line of fire and pulled back when the gunfire started, so did not capture the moment she is hit with a bullet. Jamali Hawali, a professor at the Arab American University in Jenin, who helped drag Abu Akhla's lifeless body from the road, said he believed the shots were coming from one of the Israeli vehicles, which he described as a new model which had an opening for snipers. They were shooting directly at the journalists, he said. A senior Israeli security official flatly denied to CNN on May 18th that Israeli troops killed her intentionally. How could he know that? Chat, he has no dedication to truth. He's a propagandist and a liar. How can you know that? Is it a possibility under the sun that someone could pull a trigger intentionally? Yes. Then you have to wait for the investigation. But he ran in front to do propaganda. He's a knowing liar. You can't believe a word they say. In no way would the IDF ever target a civilian, especially a member of the press. You literally bombed the AP's fucking headquarters in Gaza. An IDF soldier would never fire an M16 on automatic. They shoot bullet by bullet. Cobb. A Cobb Smith, a security consultant and British Army veteran, told CNN he believed Abu Akhla was killed in discreet shots, not a burst of automatic gunfire. To reach that conclusion, he looked at the imagery obtained by CNN, which showed markings of bullets left on the tree. The number of strike marks on the tree where Shireen was standing proves this wasn't a random shot. She was targeted. The majority of gunfire from Palestinians captured on camera that day were random sprays. Nafili Bennett, an Israel's foreign ministry, uh, the office of the Prime Minister with a voiceover in Arabic saying they've hit one, they've hit a soldier, he's lying on the ground. Because no Israeli soldiers were reported uh, killed on May 11th, Bennett's office said the video suggested Palestinian terrorists were the ones who shot the journalists. Demonstrate that the shooting in the videos couldn't in the same volley of gunfire that hit Abu Akhla and her producer, Al Samundi. CNN was unable to verify independently when the footage was, fi footage was filmed. Last month, Abu Akhla celebrated her birthday in Janine when she was there to cover an Israeli military raid. Her longtime colleague, cameraman, Junior Banora. Called. Benora and Abu Akhla st started at Al Jazeera on the same day 25 years ago, spent much of their careers out in the field together. He's still reeling from having seen whom he had filmed, uh, Abu Akhla, who he had filmed countless times before, die in front of his own eyes. When the gunfire broke out, he knew he had to continue rolling, saying that it was important to have a continuous record of her killing. Be honest, as I was feeling, I'd hoped she would be, she, she will be alive, but I knew seeing her motionless that she had been killed. You have an obligation to like, comment, and subscribe.